River Navigation Provisioning is brought to you by Sailing2Can.org and narrated by Captain Farmer. Captain and Mate Farmer have a lot of experience both inland and offshore, recreational and commercial to share with you. We're currently refurbishing and upgrading a 29-foot Catalina sailboat out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Warning about food storage. Suggested food storage times without refrigeration are only suggestions. Don't consume questionable food. Being sick on a cruise because of eating spoiled foods is no fun and it can be dangerous. We're all accustomed to the convenience of, and safety of readily available refrigeration. Don't take chances. Take extra precautions to ensure sanitation aboard at all times. Without refrigeration, you must be very careful. First things to consider, do you have a generator and a freezer, a refrigerated area, or do you have a cold plate refrigerator? Do you have enough solar and battery plus engine alternator running time to power it? Do you have a conventional ice box that's well insulated? You could add a small AC generator inverter like we see at football tailgating weekends, but this adds gas to a safer diesel boat and they also are fairly loud in a quiet anchorage. Solar and inverters for AC power. If you elect to use traditional 120 volt AC refrigeration with no generator, you need an inverter to convert battery power to AC power. Inverters can consume large amounts of battery. Solar is becoming more efficient and less expensive, but be sure to do your consumption calculations carefully. How long will you be away from grocery stores? Inland marinas are generally no more than one or two days apart, but they may only have Vienna sausage, potato chips, and beer. Offshore, even coastal, you could be away for a week or so, or sometimes even longer. Having a separate portable ice chest for drinks keeps people out of your food storage cooler and thus keeps it cool longer. You may need to ration drinks so you don't run out before the next marina reload. Tea and juices are better than beer even at anchor. Don't pour out cold water until ready to refill your drink coolers. For the rest of this presentation, we will assume an ice box only and warm storage. Have you added insulation to increase storage time? On our Catalina 25, I added solid foam plus great stuff. On our Catalina 28, it's difficult to get to the ice box. Pre-cooling your ice box the day before loading can keep it cool much longer. If you can add frozen pre-cooked dishes, they can help provide some cooling as well as food once they thaw out. For breakfast and for early lunch preparation, you're normally at anchor with access to some sort of stove, so you do have some options. For lunch, you're most likely underway, so you may want to fix sandwiches or soups for lunch well in advance. Eggs are probably the first thing that comes to mind when we think of longer distance cruises. 
We've all heard stories about coating eggs with petroleum jelly, but that just makes them hard to hold. If you can, buy farm fresh, never refrigerated eggs and flip the carton every few days to keep the inside of the shell coated. You need to use eggs within no more than two weeks and crack one at a time into a separate container to check to make sure they're okay. You can get powdered eggs on Amazon and open pouches can last up to five plus months if put in Tupperware and tightly sealed. Even pre-cooked self-stable bacon needs to be used fairly quickly after opening. There's some dry stable sausages and salami that could be used. Packaged breads will often keep five to seven days if tightly wrapped. If you have an oven, sourdough bread is a treat, especially when fresh and hot, and it will last four to five days. Tortillas can last up to a month, so they're a good choice for longer distances. There are obviously many types of dry cereal and even variety packs available. Oatmeal is good for cool mornings, especially with honey that keeps indefinitely. Boxed milk in so small servings is very convenient and powdered milk can be used in cooking. You can buy no refrigerate single juice servings and another option is to carry oranges and apples that keep over two weeks if kept in well ventilated bins or in a small hammock. If you're a true coffee lover, you probably want the real stuff, but you won't likely have an electric percolator available. Many cruisers like some variant of this percolator shown here, but there are some limitations. Look carefully at reviews and see what you think best fits your needs. For lunch underway, some form of sandwiches or soup are probably best. Cured cooked ham may last a few days, but most cheeses need to be refrigerated. Don't forget to use lettuce and tomato if you still have them. After several days, you probably need canned meats. Do your own taste tests at home before loading the boat. Be sure to keep everyone hydrated with beverages and snacks. Have tea, water, and juices available if possible. Fruits make good snacks and provide hydration as well. Be careful about sweets unless you need energy. You may need to ration snacks so you make sure you don't run out. For dinner, meat is difficult unless preserved in some way or canned after the first few days. Make sure to try it at home in advance. If you can catch edible fish, that's one option. You can make small amounts of meat or fish go further with potatoes, rice, carrots, spaghetti, noodles, pasta, and tacos. And don't forget lettuce and tomato chunks. If cooking, cook all the ingredients first and then add the pre-cooked canned meat last. And don't stir, only mix gently. Use canned meat options like spaghetti with meatballs. If you're on the Tennessee River, be careful about crocs and the river when fishing. Here's a Tennessee River croc, and this one is, was just lying there, but they can be dangerous. Fruits and vegetables stored cool Lettuce needs to be kept cool or underwater. 
Most cheeses need to be kept cool, but some sealed cheeses may last a little longer unrefrigerated. Cabbage and tomatoes can keep unrefrigerated for two to three days or longer if tomatoes were not ripe. With carrots, be sure to cut off the tops and then they can last three to five days and can be freshened in water. Fruit cooked into pies can last several days warm. Unrefrigerated apples, oranges, and tangerines can keep about a week. Don't store different fruits together. Keep in well-ventilated bins or in open hammocks. Lemons, limes, and potatoes, either white or sweet, can last for three or four weeks. Sweet potatoes can last even longer at times. Don't store potatoes with onions. Sweet potatoes can be cut into thin slices lengthwise, baked, and then stored even longer. Onions, peanuts in the shell, winter squash, and celery can be stored unrefrigerated for one to three months. Celery can be freshened up by placing it in water. Some things can be left on a boat up to a year, but make sure not to let them freeze if they're cans. Dried pasta, bouillon cubes, oatmeal, rice, dried beans, soft and hard grains, potato flakes, jerky, and similar items can be left on the boat. Canned meats, fruits, and vegetables, but be sure to label cans on top with an indelible marker. Mayonnaise is made with eggs and dairy, so it needs to be refrigerated after being opened. Mustard, ketchup, and barbecue sauce can safely be kept for about a month after being opened. Red wine vinegar and especially strawberry preserves also keep well. Use oil and vinegar dressing on your salads. Regular butter only lasts one to two days when it's warm. Peppers and basil can be kept for a week or so. Avocados two to seven days until ripe and peanut butter can last for over a month even after being opened. G is a highly clarified butter, but don't contaminate it with breadcrumbs. It may be hard to find, so you may have to ask for it in your grocery store. Corn syrup, raw honey, sugar, hard candy, and powdered jello mix keep well. Make sure things are kept dry and in tightly sealed containers. Avoid pasteboard whenever possible and repackage and seal as necessary. Flour, baking soda, rice, dried herbs, and spices plus tea leaves or mixes keep well. Fruit and tea mixes can save time for tea and you don't have to heat water. You can do sun-brewed three or four hour tea or long soaked overnight tea bags. Soy sauce keeps well. Put rice in salt and keep it very tightly closed to prevent moisture absorption. The bilge is probably the next coolest place after your ice box on your boat. Use it carefully and keep things above any bilge water. Remember to check and empty after each cruise. Out of sight, out of mind. Don't interfere with wiring or sensors and obviously don't obstruct bilge pumps. Freezing and refrigeration both retard harmful bacterial growth. Without these, you must be extremely careful about sanitation and guard against cross-contamination. 
Be sure to wash utensils carefully in hot water with detergent. Don't use utensils in more than one container. Clean pots and pans carefully and clean and disinfect all food preparation surfaces. Keep your cooler and its racks clean and smell foods before use and if they don't smell right, don't use them. Eat your shortest life items first. With mostly warm storage, you may have some spoilage. You need to check frequently and promptly remove suspect items. Don't let things get out of hand, as rot breeds more rot. Try to remember where I put that can of green beans just before dinner is no fun. Label your food storage areas and keep records. Here, 7A and B is my cooler. Keep a spreadsheet of what you have, where it is, and what you need. Here are the amount you want to consume per day and the amount on hand. The spreadsheet will then calculate what to buy. Take it to the store with you and be sure to check what you've purchased. Before you cruise, check and weigh your LP gas. Also use the gaze to check for leaks. Shut the tank valve off after every use as LP is heavier than air and will settle in the boat. Make sure you have fire extinguishers near the cooking area and a small fire blanket can be very helpful. CO2 fire extinguishers make a lot less mess to clean up. Nesting pots and pans take up a lot less space, but don't get carried away as you're not likely cooking for over four to six people at the most. Buy a little bit and see how it works for you and try one pot meals to cut down on utensils and dishwashing. There are a lot of readily available nesting food storage containers. They take up less space this way. A plastic label maker may be helpful in labeling and finding things. Be very careful about trying to use leftovers with warm storage only as it can be dangerous. If you have any doubt at all, throw it out. Seasickness is bad enough, so don't push it. Especially be careful about eggs and dairy. If you have a cooler, you may be able to use things in soups or salads later. For more detailed information on this subject, find yourself a good vessel cookbook or storage book to provide details in your provisioning process. As always, thanks for watching this free video in our series on river navigation. Please be safe and enjoy cruising. You can find our other videos at sailingtucan.org or search on YouTube for Sailing Toucan River Navigation. Please like and share these videos so others may benefit from our years of experience.